There are so many people that just really, I'm just gonna be honest and blunt about this, they suck at sales. There's the number one thing on why they suck at sales. I'm heading to the millionaire playground where all the fun people play, the entrepreneurs, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Big Picture Business Podcast. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We have another amazing special guest. I can't wait for you to meet her. Colleen Biggs is here. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Dominica. How are you? So good. How are you? I'm great, Rory. <laughs> so good to be here. Uh, yeah, awesome. We're so glad to have you. Super excited about the conversation we're going to have today because we're going to be talking about attracting your best client. This is something that we drive at home that like you need to know who you're talking to with your audience. Really just timely. It's uh, it's really important, especially in today's market online. If you're, you're marketing, building your business, reaching the right people. So we're going to go into that. Super excited about it. Let's learn a little bit about you, Colleen. Yes. Before we jump in with all these questions, you guys got to get ready for this. Colleen Biggs is an award-winning pioneer who empowers women to take the bold steps to lead up. Listen to that. Lead up. I love that so much. Lead up in their lives and in their businesses by stepping into the spotlight to expand their influence and attract more clients. Colleen is an elite business consultant that supports women to move from surviving in their business to thriving through strategic wealth building. She is an author of five best selling books with the most recent international number one bestseller, Step into the Spotlight to Expand Your Influence and Attract the Right Customers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so happy you're here. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's so important that we show up as leaders. And I think that has to do with how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your position in the marketplace, how you feel about your brand, right? So that's what leading up is really about, is just leading up and leaving the ladder down to bring other people with you. Well, how might an entrepreneur set themselves up for success to lead up and to feel confident in that rather than, you know, kind of hiding behind their brand. What does that look like exactly? Yeah, I'm glad you said that because so many people create a brand or a name that's not their own name, right? And they do that because it's easier for them to hide, like you said, Dominica, to hide behind that brand. But truly, you are the brand. And what you need to realize is you're the secret sauce, right? You're the juice. People want what you have to deliver. So if you're going to be a keyboard warrior and hang out behind your keyboard and not really get out there to meet people, then they're not going to really get to know, like, and trust you, which are the three things that need to happen for any entrepreneur to be able to be successful, unless you're just selling like a one-off product or if, you know, and it's on a marketplace or you're selling software where no one really needs to know who you are. But even in that case today, let's look at the difference between 2005 to 2022. Most people want to shop brands by looking at the reviews, by looking at who the owner is, how they're sourced, where they get their products, other companies that they collaborate with. We care more and more today about working with businesses that we like versus just the big box businesses that produce masks, right? So that's a benefit for so many entrepreneurs in the world really flipped on its head in 2020 and has offered opportunities for more entrepreneurs to enter the workspace. If any of you have read Think and Grow Rich, right? Napoleon Hill talks about it starting with a desire. You have to have a desire and a thought. Any thought that we can think of, we can create a business out of. And out of doing this for 22 years and launching over 340 businesses, I can tell you that anyone who comes to me, they usually have a story of something that's happened in their life, whether a child had cancer and then that child went through a fierce battle with in and out of the hospital and and that caused issues with them getting their ports put back in. So that mom decided to work on a new way for ports to be able to be brought in for pediatric care. And being in the hospital all the time, there's never good food to eat. So I personally know a mom that has built a nonprofit company, you know, that's about $10 million a year and providing clothing for, you know, pediatric care for cancer, providing families, the food, decorating the rooms with 
the children have to get their infusions and coming out with a new port so that whether you've been trained or not in the emergency room or on the pediatric ward, you can insert them, right? So our lives have changed and businesses are created based on experiences that we have. We need to think about those experiences and our wisdom and and our skill sets and what has happened to us in the past that gives us the credibility to teach and stand out in the market in the areas that we want to stand out in. So let me ask you then, what is your story that led up to you becoming a coach? Since, you know, it's so important, we want to understand what that looked like for you. Maybe you can take us on that journey a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, I never realized this, but from a child, you know, I worked with someone to go way, way, way back to figure out all, you know, ask those questions for me to dig deep. And so I did the work and I have been building community, putting together my baby dolls and my little stuffed animals on my bed. And I always had community of my parents used to always get so pissed off because I would have so many stuffed animals and things in my room. I always wanted to have people around me, right? I always had a lot of friends and community around me. I would sing in my little plastic microphone to them, you know, in my bedroom. I loved, you know, doing those things alone. I felt like I was creating this community in my bedroom. So as I got older, I would create community and family, create community in um, my re- in my religion, you know, through my church. There was always just a difference of when I would arrive to when I would leave, you know, if I moved or something like that, I would get all these outreaches of, of because of you, you're the reason that I, you know, came back into the family and started participating again. You're the reason that I would go to church every week because I wanted to see you and the youth would reach out to me and say that I had made such a difference with them in their lives. So I knew that community building was a big thing for me. I was lucky enough to be thrown into the coaching arena as part of corporate America. This wasn't even something, Rory, that I had planned. How I was different and how I honed my skills was the personalization that I brought to the table. I believe that everyone is important and that we need to get into the map of the other person's world first and not try and fit them into our mold of where what we think they should be doing or how they should be doing it. When you realize how different each person is and that they each bring so many skills, wisdom, experience to the table, you need to leverage that when someone is launching a business, when someone is accelerating a business or scaling a business or producing a service or a product. So when we can tap into what it is about that person and what their skill sets are that are so awesome, I can help guide them on the areas that they really need to be focusing on in their business and other things that they need to be delegating out. When you become an entrepreneur, you kind of wear like every hat to start. (laughs) Right. There are so many people that just really, I'm just going to be honest and blunt about this. They suck at sales. They suck at sales. But there's the number one thing on why they suck at sales, which is the lack of confidence that they have in the clarity of what they stand for, what their product or service is, and who they are. And I think that's probably an important point. I went through a a long, you know, three decades in corporate America, knowing who I was underneath, but allowing the labels of what everybody else told me I was to stick. And it hurt really bad. And I had to learn the hard way, really feeling beaten down, even though I was a very high executive when I left corporate America and finally said, kiss this goodbye, dropping out, I'm out of this place, you know, I'm heading to the millionaire playground where all the fun people play, the (laughs) entrepreneurs, you know, I told my husband, because he's been an entrepreneur like eight years before me, I said, why the hell did you not, I hope this isn't a family show, I'm sorry, why didn't you tell me all those years ago how much money I could make out here and you like kept me in this corporate, you just really don't know what's on the other side when you're in this little corporate bubble. And I was so mad at him for the longest time. He's like, I I just didn't realize that you'd come out here and, you know, kill it and be so successful. (laughs) Crushing it. Why did you doubt me? You know, at what what moment would you have doubted me? So I know that when we are confined, that's a great word, confined by other people, confined by others' opinions, confined by others' rules, we can't fully express ourselves. The more money we make, the more we get to be our authentic selves because it eases up kind of those pressures and we can do more, be more and have more when we make more money. And the only way to do that is to have more clients, sell more products, services, on and on and on. So I want to go a little bit deeper into community. I mean, you were talking about community and as part of like attracting your best clients, like community is a really big 
aspect of that, right? So what are some ways that our listeners today could go deep into like building a community that they actually want to be around? Yeah, you build your own community. That's where I always like to start, right? So when I launched myself out from the corporate world, I started a community immediately. And the community that I launched is called Lead Up for Women. I ran that community for four years. That community was upwards of 14,000 women in the last you know, four years. And I did it all by the connections I had made in you know several years before that, the nurturing of relationships, the truly caring about other people. I'm going to talk to your listeners to say, don't be so fast to just meet someone, do a transaction with them and move on to the next person. There's something to be said about cultivating a relationship with someone and spending that time and taking your time to get to know them. You want to like them. You want to trust them. And one of the best ways I have found to do that is to get people around me. Creating a community, I can invite them into a community. I even work with all my clients on creating community within their own own brands, whether they're a pharmacist, whether they're a real estate agent, you know, whether they're a franchise service consultant or a coach, doesn't matter what business you have. You create community. A chiropractor creates a community of the people that they serve and they can bring them in on a regular basis to educate them, to have an open house. They can invite friends in. When you have a community, people are less likely to leave because that community of the other people that are there brings so much more value. It's leveraging your time too and the value that you offer because now you're bringing all the other members and all the other people in your community to the other person and then they never want to leave that, right? Or they almost feel loyalty to it. So even if a chiropractor down the street opens, they're a better price and they're all flashy, right? They're going to stay with you because of how comfortable they feel in the community, the value they get from the other people that are there and how much you spend the time to call cultivate the relationship with. So I think that's an important piece that we need to remember. Creating the community is simple. You could do it from starting a Facebook group, from starting a meetup. One of my favorite ones is meetup because they offer communities to you based on your likes of things that you want to participate in. So it's a good way to be seen by so many individuals that right now may not ever be able to see you that are in a different state, but they have an interest that you have. And so that's a good way to connect people. Then I bring them into fun networking events that I do. These are free, y'all. This isn't something that takes a lot of time or money. You just throw out an event that you're doing a networking event. You show up. I play music because that's my jam. And I dance around a little bit in the very beginning for like five minutes before we start. And everyone just kind of releases all that, you know, stuffiness of business. And we get down to it. And then we just get to know each other. We spin wheels and do giveaways. And I ask anyone, hey, do you want to do a giveaway at the next? That's a great way to get your brand and your name out there is to give something away. Women love to win stuff. And I I mainly (laughs) circle myself with women. So we do giveaways, then we do networking. We don't even meet in person right now because so many different states and countries are still locked down. So I never really started my communities local. I started them nationally. And then we went international during the pandemic. So starting to meet up, starting to Facebook group, doing a networking, bringing people together, just find a way to bring people together to meet each other, whether it be a mastermind and you guys can talk about things in your business that you're struggling with, whatever it is, start somewhere, but you have to start. And Rory, you know, so many people get into the ready, aim, ready, aim, ready, aim. They're just aiming for like a year trying to get their business going. Drives me insane. I always say just freaking fire, ready, fire, and then aim later. Get out there, make some money. Because the more that you're in action and moving forward and doing things and showing up in different networking groups and getting yourself out there and talking on video or being on podcasts or standing on stages, the more confident you become. The more confident you become, the more people see you, the more you convince them that they need what you have and that they want to be in your energy. I hear that a lot. How do I get more of you? Oh, well, let me show you all the ways you can do that. But then you kind of start small with like a free kind of freebie. They hang around, get to know you. They get invited as guests into some free events that we do. Then they get there a little bit more, get to know you. They're fine paying because they want to stay because they love all the other women. It's not always you, right? I can't always say it's me. I'm just the one purposefully bringing everybody together. I love that you just 
said that, that it's not necessarily all about you, but it became about the community and the camaraderie really, right? And, and these women connecting. I think that's really important. I have a couple of clients right now that are currently struggling with that a bit where they've built up these great Facebook communities, but everyone's still looking at them and they haven't yet invited these other women to put up their own videos or talk about something new. It's still all about them. How might someone break out of that where it's like, all about them and they're ready to invite maybe it's other moderators or something where it doesn't have to be all on their shoulders when they're still building the community. I love that you asked that question. When I was building my community, I purposefully was searching for other communities that spotlighted their members. That's Mm -hmm. why I use the word spotlight a lot. There weren't any other communities. It was always about their masterclasses or what they were teaching or their networking events. So what I do is we run five networking events a month. I only run one of them. And then I have women that are in my membership run the other four. And then they run them the way they want to run them so that everyone has the option to experience a little of everyone different. I say the number one thing you can do if you run a Facebook group or a meetup group or whatever it is, spotlight your other community members. So say, hey, I'm going to run some spotlights every week. If you want to be spotlighted as a community member, message me below and we'll be sure to get you on the schedule. And I do member Monday spotlights. We do teaching Tuesday master classes and those are all ran by my members. I don't run them. I just get on and start them up, say hey, who I am. I introduce the host who is going to be the person running it and then they spill out all their juiciness that they need to do and sometimes we're talking about real estate, how to, you know, stage your home. We're talking about getting to tap into your chakras. We're talking about how to, you know, manage your medication and supplements. We're talking about everything in your whole life. This isn't just about business. Sometimes it is about bookkeeping, but they all have the opportunity opportunity to get out there, to be in the front, to sell their services by people getting there and liking them. We talk about SEO and everything you can imagine. We do Thrive Thursday spotlights where we spotlight one person in our community every week. This is simple. It's a matter of just throwing up a photo of them and asking them to, you know, hey, fill out this questionnaire and ask some of these, answer some of these questions. You copy and paste it, throw it up on social media or LinkedIn or whatever it may be. You know, they're like, oh my gosh, I was spotlighted in this community. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how much people want to see themselves spotlighted and how much they want to talk about themselves. So give them the platforms to do that. They will stay around forever. I have the best retention rate in my community because it's not about me. It's all about them. Love it. Thank you for sharing some of the secret sauce of that. I think that's really valuable. I never realized until I put my community together how important community is for a lot of people and how they want to be a part of that. And that sometimes that's the only reason they're there. They'll show up every week just to have the community aspect of it. I didn't realize that because like I don't know, I guess I'm introverted and I, I like can focus and do my stuff and not need it as much. But for other people, like wildly eye-opening to go, oh, wow, they're just like here to connect. And especially now, especially, you know, over the last uh, couple of years of not being able to connect as much in person, like people are craving it. Well, on the lines of what you were just talking about, I think you made a very strong point and I want your listeners to go back and like really anchor that in. They want to be there for all of the people, for the whole mash of it, right? And it's the value that all the other people bring. So when I started a group coaching, I had only been doing one-on-one now for, you know, 20 some years and just read. Recently, in the last year or so, I started group coaching. I have been overwhelmed. And I did get my personal clients together once a month. They would get together every Monday morning for like a kind of a shotgun 30 day goal setting, and we would do accountability. But nothing like the group I have now, where they get together every single week for 90 minutes. They have accountability partners together. The whole group gets together, you know, four times a year in person. They have messaging groups going on Facebook that I'm in. It's the community that keeps them together. When you realize that, it's almost like a relief for you to realize that they're here because I brought them all here and I was the one that attracted them to this. However, the value that everybody else brings elevates you, elevates your brand, and all boats rise together. That's way valuable. It's priceless for people especially introverts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously, they need a safe space to be able to open up sometimes. 
especially in front of a lot of people, like being vulnerable, very hard for introverts to, to do that because they don't want to necessarily just be like, ah, yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to ask you, it's more the opposite side of things because we're talking about all the great aspects of community, but as community leaders, one of the things that I have struggled with is the emotional side of what other people in the community are going through. I mean, we've had people have strokes and have cancer and things like that. How do you deal with that emotional aspect for yourself? You know, um, I approach this very differently because in my community, we've had women that have lost their husbands, you know, their spouses. I'm overwhelmed by the support that each person that goes through something when they are vulnerable and have the courage and are brave enough to get out there and talk about it, whether they're working through an addiction. I have a client right now who her husband was working through an addiction and had a um, seizure at a wedding and it was alcoholism. And so she, of course, told us right away. The whole community supported her because her husband was in rehab and away from her the whole month of December. So all of Christmas, all of New Year, she was alone by herself. They don't, you know, she doesn't have any kids. So the outreach of the community was just mailing her cards every day, sending her gifts. For me, it fills me so much. It fills my cup so much to see the reaction of the other women in my community. So for me, instead of it being draining or tough or hard, I I like to see the outreach that the rest of the community builds. And I know that's because that's the type of person I am and I lead that charge. That's part of that attracting the right client that I we need to nail in a little bit here. Who you attract in your community are going to be the people that need to be in your community that are attracted to your vibration, your personality, you know, the way that you do things, the way you run your community, the type of other people that are in your community. I get that probably the most, Rory where women will say, I love your community because of the women that are in it. You attract great women. It's nothing I do on purpose, right? It's just when you authentically get out there confidently about your brand and confidently about yourself and say, I'm not gonna, you know, sugarfoot around on anything. This is who I am. This is what I teach. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. This is what I do. If you don't like it, that's fine. You can do it your way. But I think when we don't care so much about what other people think about about us and we're just out there blazing our own trail, during the time that we're blazing our own trail, we are taking care of those people in our community and those people around us because they need that nurturing and they need that guidance and you're there for them. You just attract those people. I, I hear it all the time. Like, I want to hire you as my coach because I love your energy. I like how down to earth you are, how you're very action oriented and you will talk about money till the day's end where a lot of people are afraid to talk about you know money and why it's important to have a lot of money, right? I'm not embarrassed about that to talk about it. I think that confidence piece, when you are building that confidence in yourself, again, the more you get out there, the more you're in action, the more you meet other people, the more you show up, the more you present yourself in a way where other people are so attracted to that, they just want to find out how they can be around you more. They need that energy, especially if their mindset is a little lack and they're struggling with that, they want to be around that more. I have a client and I know it's always great to share client stories because then it's real. You know, we'll call her Jennifer because I don't have a Jennifer that I work with. She said, I've never been more confident about myself and sure about what I'm doing than I have been since I joined this group. She didn't say since I started working with you. She said, since I joined this group group. And she's in my group coaching. That was very flattering to me because I know it was the other women that supported her through that. And the belief that set by me through all of them that we believe we can do more, be more, have more, and there really is no limit. And we're there to fuel and support each other in that way. Failure is acceptable because failure happens in every business and it becomes a stepping stone to the next transaction. Preaching to the choir. I love it. <laughs> I love it. A lot of similarities and, and a lot of, I guess, business values and morals align, which is fun. It makes it even more fun to chat with you just because literally everything you're saying, I'm like, yep, yep, yep. And I didn't want to interrupt before, but Rory came up with this phrase that I love so much and I've adopted into my business where we build relationships, not transactionships. And just hearing you talk about the importance of building relationships, not losing sight of it. And it just goes to show, I mean, I think like the moral of this whole podcast is build relationships, not transactions, because you're going to go so much farther in business. I mean, 
light speed. It's amazing. I just love everything you're saying. Thank you for being transparent about the way that you've built your community. I think it's wonderful. Of course, because there's so many things that we get out there and try and do. And one more piece of advice for your listeners is keep it simple. Okay. The whole K-I-S-S, right? Keep it simple, stupid. And the reason why I say that is because I am like over deliverer. I just want to give everyone so much value that they're like, I don't even know what to do with all of this, right? (laughs) When you do that, this is why I've scaled back, changed things, modified, simplified, because they would say there's just so much and I didn't really get the opportunity to take advantage of all of it. So I don't know if I want to do it again next year. You never want to hear that. Simplifying things so that they're not overwhelmed by too many things. It's easier for them to feel that they're contributing, getting value, being part of and not overwhelmed. You don't have to do a lot at all. Just show up and create community by bringing people people together purposefully. You don't have to necessarily create a web page, all these things that everyone thinks they have to do. I always say I built two multi six figure businesses with with zero websites. I didn't even have websites. There was no button for anyone to click to join. I sent an invoice, but I built them off of getting people together, offering them an opportunity to do something with me. One of them was one of my group coaching. The other one was a mastermind that I started. And then they were like, yeah, I want in. I told them what we were going to do all year. And then I sent them an invoice. There was no website for them to go look it up or a button for them to click. And so many people stay in that aim. My website's not ready. I'm like, screw the website. Get out there and start making some money, right? Set up your PayPal account or Stripe account or however you're going to take money. Just figure out a way to take money and get out there and sell. Like, seriously. That's you, right, Rory? That's how you started, right? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I was just going to say, like, that's what I did. I had a six-figure business in six months, but it was like two and a half years or something into the business before even building a website. Because you didn't necessarily need it. No, you just, you make things work. I just built mine. My ColleenBiggs.net just got built like, you know, mid last year. And I've been doing this since like 2018. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) See, for me, my business is building websites. So I kind of had to have a website, but that's, you know. I have a client that I work with that builds websites. She says the same thing. If my website looks like crap, you know, it's like the painter's house. It's never painted. I get it. Exactly. Well, let's talk about your book a little bit. I was just going to say that because you have a number one international bestselling book called Step Into the Spotlight to Expand Your Influence and Attract the Right Customers. So what I want to know is what's some tips and tricks for like getting yourself to step into the spotlight? Because that's not always an easy thing for most people. Yeah, you know, and I think you can ease your way into it. And that's why joining communities is a good way for all of your listeners out there joining other communities. Look at the ones that you're part of now. I always say, you know, dig deep in the ones you're in and don't do a wide net, right? Don't join 70 communities because you're not going to participate in 70. So look at the ones you're already part of now. See what's fulfilling you, what you've participated in, the ones you really like. Keep them, the ones that you haven't don't just get rid of them, get out of the community, be done with it. And then the ones that you are part of, dig a little bit deeper and find out how can I be part of this community a little bit more, right? Maybe you check in with them every day and go online or they have events that they're doing and you've never been and you start attending those events. So how can you build your confidence by starting with community? They are going to help fuel your confidence. Do you guys agree that, I don't know why I put my hand up. I think it's from speaking on stage. So right, yeah. Time to <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree that when you're in a community, you feel more confident being around other people that are communicating with you, having conversations with you? If you have a chance to speak, they might put something in the chat, say, oh, yeah, I totally agree with you. That's wonderful. It's great advice. We all need to feel that as a human. And it's so funny because I don't listen to what other people say, but we all need to feel that acceptance and love and appreciation and respect from other people. So get yourself in communities that do that, right? So start there. The second thing is if you're not already working with a mentor or a coach or someone that can guide you step by step on how to get out there, I love networking. I'm an extrovert right? I'm opposite of Rory. I love networking and getting out there. I create happy hours for people. I create gatherings for people. Not a lot of people like to do that, especially in person. Even if you go to a networking event that's online, which is very easy to do right now, I say start with that. You know, just 
going into the rooms and introducing yourself. Start with a mentor that can help you get clarity on your message so that you feel really confident about your brand and who you are going into it, right? If you don't know what to say, you have nothing written down. I remember the first this sounds hilarious. The first couple radio shows I did, I had the whole script written down and they were just looking at me and laughing like, you don't need that. I'm like, yes, I do need it. You know, I studied night after night after night and listened to podcasts. And I really kind of built my own confidence going like, I can do this, right? Some of these podcasts are actually pretty horrible that are out there. Like some of them weren't that great that I was listening to and others were like off the charts. So I was like, if they can be that bad, I can, I can fall in here, right? I can just land somewhere in the podcast it's going to be you know not off the charts but probably not the worst is what I was thinking. Then even when I would do networking on Zoom for a while, I was honing in my message and I would have it written. So I would just pull it up and have it on the screen and read it because that gave me that little crutch and self-confidence. Use what you need to use until you feel sure and clear. When you have surety and certainty, it's super sexy. When you're sure about what you do, when you deliver your message, when other people feel that vibe from you, um, you have a different energy, they want to hear what you have to say. So my trick, if we're talking about networking is the second I get in a room, I'm the first one to speak, which is exactly what my mentor told me not to do. I'm not I'm not kidding. He was like, be the last to speak. But in networking, I'm the first one that says, hey, Janine. Hey, Dominica. Hey, Rory. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? Everyone's like, oh, hey. Hi. Oh, Colleen. Nice to meet you. Okay. So we've got seven of us here. What did they say? We had like 15 minutes. So someone have a time. Someone want to keep time. And they're like, oh, I'll keep time. And then before you know it, I'm like, okay, Dominica, why don't you go first? When you're done, why don't you nominate the next person. Now that builds camaraderie because Dominica is like, I nominate Rory and Rory's like, oh, I knew you were going to pick me. And then Rory <laughs> gets to go next. And then he nominates the next person. And I pull up the caboose because now I've listened to everyone talk about what they do and who they are. I make my message very much bringing all of them together about what I do and how I can support them in the community that I offer and why I do it. Right. And so I kind of tie it all up together. And then that way, if time is short, I can do it really fast. They think I'm the leader. Like they don't know. But because I spoke first and kind of took charge of the room, we always say the one in charge is the one asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't have to word vomit on everyone. Just ask questions to get to know people. And you'd be surprised how much you don't have to talk. And you can just sit there and listen to people and learn so much about them. Like they'll tell you everything about them. And then you know exactly how you can serve them. And and I think that that's a message that should be out there a little bit more, right? Ask more questions, listen more, and see how you can serve the other people. So the other part of attracting the right client is stop trying to be someone you're not. Just stop. Like, if you think you suck, you don't think you're that good of a speaker, or you don't think you have something to deliver to others, you've got to work on your self-esteem. And the only way for you to do that is to um, work with a mentor or a coach, read books that are personal development. I run a book club on purpose for the reason of helping all these women build confidence in who they are in their businesses, right? And these books that we read do that. The work that we do in the books do that. So get yourself books that are really good personal development books and set your mindset every day, you know, read intentions, look at yourself every day in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself. Most people don't even do those little tiny itty bitty steps, but this will build your self confidence. Get rid of people that are naysayers, poo pooers, and people that are negative in your life. Just get rid of them because you're going to outgrow them or you're going to stay stuck with them. Move on. Only surround yourself with people that fuel your success, fuel you as a person that you feel comfortable with because that's how success will happen but you got to be yourself all the time. And that's like your secret sauce all the time when you're out there, just being you. And then you show up consistently through your brand like that, your wording and your content like that, your videos are like that. I just think being yourself, you become relatable to other people and that that's the ones that you attract. I want to add on one thing to what you're saying about, you know, uh, introverts and extroverts, because a lot of times people see me on video and on stage and things like that, where uh, they're like, well, how, how can you be an introvert and be doing these things? And really being introvert and extroverted is not all about whether or not you can get up in front of an audience. Both sides can have issues with that. Introvert and extroverted means that extroverted people get energy from being in environments and then introverted people get drained by being in environments with a lot of people and a lot of things going on. These are learned skills 
to be able to be on camera, to be able to do podcasts, to be able to be interviewed on radios, to be able to present in front of people. So if they're learned skills, that means you can learn them. Just remember that as you're moving forward with your business, you just have to do it. You have to learn every time you do it, you're just going to get a little bit better and a little bit better. You're going to learn more about how you can improve and you'll be so much better off like a year or two down the road. You'll be like, I can do this. But if you don't actually start, then you're not going to get there. So just take those little steps every single day to, you know, put yourself in that situation where you can experience and and grow through this process, right? Yeah, I call it start before you're ready, because if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing for all of us. Yes. I always, always say that. I'll say, look, if I'm not at least a little bit anxious or nervous, it's not worth doing it. I know it's worth doing it if that's how I feel about it. And I, I present super extroverted, but at the end of the day, I'm really more like introverted. I like to be, I'm kind of a loner. I like to be quiet, but when I'm in a public setting and it could be from singing for so many years or being on stage or whatever, that's just how I present to the world. So when people see me not in that setting, I'm pretty quiet. And they're like, what's wrong with you? Like, this is me. You know, this is just how it is. After a while, when we were doing music, I did a small tour on a Christian music circuit for a little while and it stopped becoming fulfilling doing that kind of touring. And so I knew I was like, well, it's time for me to switch gears a little bit here because I'm not getting the, a little bit of anxious, a little bit of nervousness. And so I shifted everything and was for the better to, you know, fulfillment and better purpose and all that. Right. So if you're in that position, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I don't know how to, how to be extroverted, or maybe I'm too introverted. Rory, I love what you said, that they're learned skills and you don't have to be one one or the other. It's okay. If you present one way, you don't have to be like that all the time. You'll burn out. I've been there. <laughs> you don't have to do it all the time. Well, Colleen, you actually mentioned to us that you have a gift, a giveaway. It's a lunch and learn for our listeners. Is that true? Yes. I think one of the best ways for people to cultivate relationships, to get to know other people, to get to know other people that I surround myself with is to come to a networking event. That's why I love to give them away. So we have them on the first Thursday of every single month. I want your guests to be able to have the opportunity to come with no strings. Just come show up and, you know, we'll have a little dance party. You'll get to, we'll spin the wheel. Your name will be there. You'll get, you know, the opportunity to get some giveaways. You'll go into breakout sessions and meet some other people. And then if you're like, this is not the community for me, you walk away with maybe a free gift or something that day, right? But then that's it. I love to give people the opportunity to meet other people and go in those breakout rooms and just get to know people. We do fun things like, what was your biggest regret of 2021? Or do you like flip-flops or do you like tennis shoes? You know, do you wear shorts or are you jeans person? You know, do you like to fly or take a you know, drive your car. So we always ask fun questions like that so we can get to know each other personally. And then you can share a little bit about you and connect and get to know someone else because you never know who you might meet that could open up another door for you or introduce you to that right person that you needed to meet the entire time. So if you feel inclined and you're like, hey, I like her energy, I think that would be a fun networking event to go to, then we welcome you and you're cordially invited. That's awesome. And what's the best way for people to find that event? The best way for them to do that's going to be at Lead Up for Women. In, and they can go on there and they can uh, book that event or they can also go to ColleenBiggs.net. That's the other way for them to find the events that we have out there. Wonderful. And we will make sure to have those links in the show notes as well. This has been awesome. <laughs> I've really, really enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I know that you primarily work with women. Is there, you know, our listeners are hearing this. You're like, I want to work with her directly. Are you currently offering that one-on-one -on -one coaching or are there spots available in the group coaching? Yeah, there are. You know, I have limited spots available because I do like to keep very intimate groups. It's very important to me because they bond so quickly. ColleenBiggs.net is where you can find about more about me, the opportunities for me to come inspire groups, for me to work one-on-one -on -one with you. I do work with men. How I work with men is more in like a goal-setting atmosphere called the inner circle with Colleen. So I do work with men and women in that circle. And that's where we go through blueprints of setting your goals and working through blockers and accelerators and the things that can get in your way of achieving your goals. So that's limited time with me that they get. You know, there's two coaching sessions a month that I do in there, but I like to work with men and women 
in that group, but the communities that I run, the LEAP community, the Lead Up community, those communities are all women. It, I know, Rory, I'm sorry. It just changes the conversation. And trust me, my husband is like, how do I get in this group? You know, all the time. It changes the conversation when men are there. And I have really enjoyed, even though I worked with so many men, you know, in the past 20 some years coaching, I think they like to work with me because I was confident. I was matter of fact. I just know that God has put me on a path that I need to work with women right now. And that's where my calling is. And so I encourage everyone out there to do what lights them up and to not worry about, you know, if someone likes it or doesn't like it or thinks you should do it or not do it. My family was not for me quitting corporate and starting my own thing. Now they love it, but they didn't like it back then, right? They were my naysayers. They were like, no, you shouldn't do it. So we think our families are biggest supporters, but they're not. So get your supporters around you, but do what lights you up. What really fuels you? I'm glad that Dominica said that. Like she had to switch gears because she wasn't being fulfilled anymore. And when we're not being fulfilled anymore, we're really not helping others. If you really want to help others, you've got to do what fills you up because that means that's what you're called to do. So much value. I hope all of you are taking notes from today's episode because it's incredible. Again, that site where you can go to the lunch and learn leadupforwomen.com forward slash lunch dash in dash learn. Be sure to check that out. That is it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. 